excuse me, this brings me into the other part is embedded antennas. So the embedded antennas are very interesting because uh, this is also something where our embedded electronics and embedded antennas kind of uh, are going to be our initial unique capabilities that we're uh, we're trying to showcase to our customers. And so the embedded antennas will be great because uh, this will allow you to Im embed a non-planar antenna into non-traditional locations within the manufacturing process. And so what this means is um, is that uh, traditionally uh, they the way you uh, put antennas in something is it'll uh, be embedded or pressed into a plastic or it'll be uh, a, a uh, copper uh, filament or tape that they use to, uh, to press onto a device, onto the housing of the device. Or they, uh, they use uh, a series of uh, other types of antennas that they actually have to then uh, in, just press into the plastic. They'll have uh, pieces that hold it and it actually has to clip in there and hold hold in place. What this does is it's taking uh, design space away from the rest of the part or uh, piece or product that they're trying to manufacture. You're now having to uh, design more space within the device or on the external housing of the device to now hold that antenna. And so with it, embedded antennas with added manufacturing, what you'll actually be able to do is you're going to be able to take a section of the housing and as you're, uh, you can print just that section that it holds the antenna and then apply that to the outside of the device or uh, and, and with a connection point or actually make that, uh, say, one side of the housing itself, uh, entire uh, piece has an embedded antenna. This actually will allow you to increase the size of the antenna that you are allowed to put into your product, as well as expand the uh, geometric design for the antenna and make it non-planar so that you can uh, have more curved uh, sur surfaces and uh, design capabilities in your end product. And these applications for antennas don't just extend for embedded uh, antennas uh, or the uh, type of large antennas that uh, you may be thinking of when I'm explaining. Uh, the types of applications for antennas that I'm referring to are actually uh, everything from um, RFID tags. Uh, we've spoken with people that were in loss prevention. They're uh, expressly, excuse me, especially interested in this with the ability to actually print an RFID tag on the outside of, of the capsule or housing of a product and send it on its way versus uh, them having to throw in uh, and print them individually and add them to the product, as well as embedding them into, uh, into the product itself, where it's non-intrusive to the actual end user, but it would allow them uh, to prevent them from having uh, uh, people remove the tags when they attempt to uh, steal a product or something. So uh, it would actually be in the product itself. So therefore, it would uh, not, they, that wouldn't be uh, they wouldn't be able to remove it. Um, and then, as well as uh, uh, the excuse me, uh, more complex geometric uh, uh, antennas that are currently being made. And you see this in five uh, G antennas as well as fractal antennas. And so fractal antennas are uh, interesting. Uh, these are very unique antennas. Uh, and uh, I, I, the image that I have of one is uh, unfortunately is not very clear. So if I share it, it's going to be very blurry and not very uh, uh, very clear. But if you Google fractal antenna, it normally comes up. It's a small inverted uh, pyramid with a series of uh, pyramid holes throughout the inside of it. And this is a uh, copper uh, AM application where uh, they were doing uh, post processing uh, to produce these uh, fractal antennas. And so these fractal antennas is a uh, CU29 is also going to be able to build antennas very similar uh, for our end users. Um, but the most exciting aspect for, um, for CU29 is for the Internet of Things. So as we know, uh, more and more we're uh, bringing, uh, bringing electronics that make our lives more convenient into our day-to-day -day lives. And all these products are supposed to link and communicate effectively and allow us to, um, to you know, have more convenience on our uh, as we you know move through life and uh, one of the issues though is unfortunately is that they're finding is uh, where to put these antennas like the antennas that they're trying to do uh, especially with some of the commercial aspects they have very uh, very uh, specific designs necessary for the application and one of these companies that I was talking to was actually uh, making devices that attach to power lines that uh, give real world power outages for uh, municipalities and power companies. The problem was, was uh, they were having to use a piece of copper tape laid in the inside of the housing 
as an uh, ineffective uh, antenna. And so uh, after speaking with them and uh, explaining uh, the capabilities of our product, they became real excited about the possibility of uh, 3D printing an embedded antenna and it just being a small section that they can add to that device after the fact uh, or even modify the existing de devices uh, or housings to uh, allow for this uh, embedded antenna to be applied to it. And we're talking about a multitude of products uh, from these um, and the internet of things with the cell phone antennas, uh, which are very planar, where they have to print on a curved surface and it goes back and forth. These antennas are also highly sought after for uh, internet of things devices as well. Uh, it's, um, it allows for easy, uh, smooth transition between uh, the communications of all these products. And uh, with our filament, it would actually allow for more complex antennas to be in, uh, added to the device without uh, having to cause a redesign of the device as well.